Remember the infamous story about George Washington cutting down the cherry tree and telling his father, I cannot tell a lie, I did cut it with my hatchet. Well, ironically, this story about Washington's honesty was a tall tale. It was popularized by one of Washington's first biographers named Mason Locke Weems. George Washington started school at the age of six, but had to leave at 15, as his mother couldn't afford his education after the death of George's father. Washington was not taught Latin or Greek like many gentlemen's sons, and he never learned a foreign language. The good news is that George was so good at math that he became a land surveyor at 16. So yes, you can say that Washington was a school dropout. Those wooden teeth you've heard so much about? Well, it turns out that it's not quite true. In fact, Washington actually wore many different kinds of dentures. Some were made of ivory, gold, and lead. And some historians speculate that his dentures were also made of cow and horse teeth. Yikes! But one thing is clear. They were not made of wood, though they sort of looked like wood. In fact, by the time Washington became president in 1789, he only had one real tooth oh left. Washington was the only sitting president who commanded troops in battle. As our nation's first commander-in-chief, Washington in 1794 personally led over 10,000 militiamen to western Pennsylvania to the Whiskey Rebellion. Though Washington is best known for leading the Continental Army against the British during the Revolutionary War, which was before he became president. When Washington served in the army, he was a mere major general. In other words, a two-star general. After his presidency, John Adams promoted Washington to lieutenant general, a three-star general. It stayed that way until 1976, when George Washington was promoted to General of the Army of the United States, making him the only six-star general in U.S. history. Pretty cool, General. Washington lost more battles than he won, but his leadership helped secure American independence. Washington was known for his ability to rally the troops under fire, his understanding of strategic goals, and his ability to boost troop morale in difficult times. Despite this, George Washington lost many more battles than he won, though he did have key victories at the Battle of Trenton in 1776 and Yorktown in 1781. What was George Washington's role in the Constitutional Convention of 1787? He was elected the president of the convention, though originally he did not want to be part of creating the Constitution. His presence, however, at the convention was critical in providing a sense of direction and focus by overseeing the discussions. He was always a supporter of a stronger union and helped make it a reality. George Washington became the first and only president to be unanimously elected by the Electoral College with 69 votes in 1789, and he achieved it again for his second term in office in 1792 with 132 votes. John Adams received the second most votes and therefore was named the Vice President of the United States. Pretty cool stuff, huh? George Washington was the only president not to occupy the White House because it was not built. During his two terms as president, the U.S. Capitol was located first in New York and then in Philadelphia. The federal government moved in 1800 from Philadelphia to what is today Washington, D.C. John Adams was the first president to occupy the White House back in 1800. 